SLT Fiber and experience the power of fiber technology. Sri Lanka's only super fast internet connection. SLT Fiber. Call 1212 now. Tonight, we backed the wrong horse. TNA parliamentarian MS Sumandiran regrets backing the UNPSLFP marriage. SLC under the cosh. Cope takes cricket aid to the cleaners. Imagine him as president. Opposition leader Lords Gautabir's prowesses. Too little, too late. Hong Kong's leader set to announce the formal withdrawal of the controversial bill. All that and much more coming up on First at Nine, this Wednesday, the 4th of September, 2019. Nama Life Boy, cool fresh, saha lemon fresh, menthol saha lemon sare. Daha diya tanda epikar na sangu wili visa beach wili arak shakra obawa fresh karai. Visa beach of fresh ka on. From Adha Verana, this is Adha Verana First at Nine. Live from Studio 24 in Colombo. Good evening and welcome to First at Nine. I'm Dhammiki Kanaga. Let's start with your local stories. Jaffna District Parliamentarian TNA and TNA spokesperson MS Sumandiran is remorseful over his party's role as a sponsor of the Unity Government. Regretting the party's move, Sumandiran told media that the National Unity Coalition appeared fractured even during its early stages and displayed insincerity throughout in approaching constitutional reforms promised to his electorate. He accused the two men coalition partners of vying for electoral advantage in the lead up to the 2018 local authorities' polls and resorting to blame games for their combined failures in resolving the issues of the executive presidency. Sumandiran pointed out that the TNA backed the coalition's common candidate based on promises to solve the Tamil national issue and bringing about changes to the current system, but remains not amused by the fact that these promises remain unfulfilled. Having propped up the coalition government, Sumandiran told the Hindu that the ill effects of the coalition breakdown are now being felt and the cost of backing the wrong horse means that the party has achieved nothing for its people, a fact that the party will have to bear in mind when meeting its electorate at the next election. The Jaffna MP said his party has resigned itself to backing an, exe backing an executive presidential candidate this time once again, but added that although... He does not foresee a partnership with the JVP's presidential candidate this time around. The future looks bright for cooperation between the two parties and other progressive parties from the South. Sumandiran, however, stated that the TNA will wait for presidential candidates to be officially announced and manifestos to be released before deciding. Winning your trust above all. We are HNB Assurance. Indian Ocean Conference 2019, hosted by the Government of Maldives, commenced in Mali yesterday under the theme of securing the Indian Ocean region traditional and non traditional challenges. Addressing the Forum, Minister of External Affairs of India, Subramaniam Jayashankar, raised concerns about existing instruments of national policies and international law being inadequate in tackling issues in the Indian Ocean region. Prime Minister Ranil Vikramasinghe addressing the same forum, meanwhile stated that the countries in the Indian Ocean region should focus on enhancing national capacities in tracking potential terrorists. The World Bank has forecasted that the global GDP growth will slow to 2.6% this year from 3% 3, uh, 3 in 2018. As a result of rising trade barriers, renewed volatility in the financial markets, and a sharper-than-expected downturn in a number of major economies. Worryingly, the World Trade Organization's dispute resolution body is on a course to cease functioning by December, which could mean that global trade rules and protocols that took so many years to develop will become unenforceable, and thus essentially defunct. The risk of bigger than neighbor trade policies which would affect small countries disproportionately, is therefore high. It is certainly a setback to our nations, which are seeking to expand trade relations both within the region and outside. This shift of global economic balance of power to Asia has resulted in an 
asymmetrical bipolarity with US and China coming to the center. With such heightened economic activity, maritime security concerns are inevitable. All these political economic developments have led to the most pressing challenge, which is the tripolar competition in the Indian Ocean. The Indian Ocean is tipped to become a theater of contemporary global geopolitics, with India and China on one hand, and USA and China on the other, competing for the space. For India, China's going presence in the Indian Ocean is a source of concern, especially in the South Asian neighborhood. We will continue to champion peace and stability in the region. Premier Ranil Vikramasinghe then went on to express views on addressing security concerns in the region. The assistance of Interpol in sharing the databases of known and potential terrorists in Sri Lanka and many other countries is welcome. But we must also focus on enhancing national capacities of the countries in the Indian Ocean through technical assistance and enhanced intelligence sharing. Resolving this issue will take time, but will also succeed in diffusing the tension in the Indian Ocean. In addressing both traditional and non-traditional challenges to secure Indian Ocean, the gaps in legislation covering territorial waters of the littoral states in the Indian Ocean varying ability of literal states to extend adequate surveillance as well as infrastructure, technical and human resource capability and capacity for law enforcement remain an impediment. Nowhere else in the world is the pursuit of economic prosperity and physical security in the midst of competition, contestation and change more intense than in the Indian Ocean. It is therefore only natural that the Indian Ocean region faces the most difficult challenges in the domains of traditional and non-traditional security. Existing instruments of national policy and international law are perhaps not fully adequate to tackle these challenges, and they have to be complemented by effective regional mechanisms which rise above the complex regulatory landscapes and the divergent development needs of the countries of the region. Consider that inter-regional trade in South Asia comprises a dismal 5% of our collective GDP. Contrast this to ASEAN countries, 25%. It has been estimated that if we reduce our non-tariff trade barriers within the Indian Ocean region, we can increase our collective gross national product by $568 billion, underscoring the great loss we suffer by not doing our utmost to facilitate political and economic linkages between us. Moving on to political news, Sri Lanka Freedom Party announces that they have served letters outlining disciplinary action against five nationalist members of parliament who left the party. General Secretary of the party, MP Das Irijasekra, made the announcement during a media briefing held at the SLFP's headquarters today. The Sri Lanka Freedom Party has served letters notifying disciplinary action against five of its nationalist parliamentarians. Letters were served to parliamentarians S.P. Disanayaka, Dilan Pereira, Lakshmanya Pabe Vardhana, Vijit Vijay Monisoiza and A.H.M. Fauzi. Uh, we have already sent letters conveying disciplinary action to members of the SLFP who came to parliament through the party's national list and joined the UNP as well as those who recently joined the Sri Lanka Podijana Peramuna. We will take disciplinary action against them if they fail to explain their themselves within the next seven days. Had we carried out strict disciplinary measures, another party wouldn't have been formed in this country. It happens solely because of democratic principles of the president and us, although this situation became an issue later on. I understand that. We can do that and there were many occasions where we could have done that, but we never did. At a time when a parliamentary select committee was revoking parliamentary seats, had I, as the general secretary of the party, not issued a letter backing them when they obtained membership of the SLPP, none of them would be parliamentarians. As the leader of the party, the president implied to members of the party that the 2020 government will also be led by us. A government can't be established without us. Now, in the meantime, opposition leader Mahindra Rajapaksha assures that presidential hopeful of the Sri Lanka Podijana Peramuna will be able to ensure a disciplined government if elected as the country's head of state. Opposition leader expressed these views during the Senior Citizens Convention of the SLPP held in Colombo today. 
SLPP's presidential hopeful Gautabi Rajbaksha met with smallholders from several sectors, including tea, rubber and horticulture today. Opposition leader Mahindra Rajbaksha was also present at the meeting. If we could have been self-sufficient back then, why aren't we today? This is what is happening everywhere. Earlier, we used to be 100% self-sufficient in chilli cultivation, but today we are importing chilies 100%. Onions, green gram and mustard and many other products are also being imported. The government is not concerned about the local farmer, but more about foreign sellers. We must first put an end to that process. They took away the fertilizer concession. I reintroduced it when the 51-day government came to power. Thankfully, it is still being implemented. There are also statements being made that the president will not have the necessary powers to do anything. He made sure to do things successfully when he was the defense secretary. So just imagine how much more he will be able to accomplish if elected president. A leader who is wise, patient, disciplined, one who would listen to others is needed to build and move this country forward. Later in the day, the Senior Citizens' Convention of the Sri Lanka Pudujana Peramuna was held under the patronage of SLPP Presidential Hopeful Gotabe Rajpaksha and Opposition Leader Mahindra Rajpaksha in Colombo. Salaries of government officials increase as per their day-to-day -day expenditure. It's unfair when pensioners aren't given the same privilege. Retirees from the private sector have to live with money from the EPF or interest to receive from their bank savings. I think pensioners must be exempt from having to pay taxes on their bank savings. Let's fulfill our duty to develop the country so that the future generation can reap its benefits. I request the senior citizens of the country to join us in fulfilling that goal of ours. <laughs> They're the ones who are engaged in mudslinging. None of us talk about presidential candidates. There are talks about 3 billion rupees being taken from the cultural fund. They also talk about receiving a cash check of 300 million rupees. We must prepare to save our motherland from this inhuman and responsible government without a vision. <laughs> And the Election Commission will have the power to call a presidential election by the 15th or 16th of September. Speaking to other than the chairman of the Election Commission, Mahinda Deshapri said that the earliest date the presidential election could be held under the provisions of the relevant act is the 10th of November this year. He highlighted the 15th of November as the easiest date for the poll to be held, with the 9th of December being the furthest date possible for the poll. He added that the Election Commission hopes to call nominations soon. President Maitripala Sirisena says that the time has come to take immediate decisions to protect the country. The head of state was addressing a book launch held in Colombo today. A ceremony organised to mark the launch of the trio of books authored by Dr Vijay Dasa Rajpaksha was held at the BMICH in Colombo today. It was held with President Maitripala Sirisena and opposition leader Mahind Rajpaksha in attendance. There's a constitutional crisis in the country today. When the Prime Minister, who has the power in Parliament, adopts a policy to sell the country's resources, a conflict erupts when the President adopts a diverging policy to protect the resources. This conflict has led to a considerable constitutional crisis. People's franchise is lost ever since the establishment of the Independent Election Commission. And we cannot repel the public perception that the Parliament is incapable of forming a law that can be implemented in the country. Therefore, for the looming presidential election is crucial for the nation. With matters explained by Dr. Vijay Das Rajpaksha on the country's present political state and the future of the country, the time has come for the people, politicians, the religious sector and the intellectuals to make decisions quickly pertaining to the country. In the meantime, the president also attended the global conference of the Bora community worked off centering the Bora Masjid Mosque along the Marine Drive in Colombo. All of you coming to my country is a delight for us. The Bora community is peaceful, good and respectful people and I believe that the worldwide Bora community is the same. I also believe that you will have a good understanding of our country when you head back after the conference. Officials of Sri Lanka cricket had a torrid time before COPE. Details after this break.
Welcome back. You're watching First at Nine. Now, the Committee on Public Enterprises instructed Sri Lanka Cricket to suspend operations of Cricket Aid until the Auditor General submits a report within two months. The officials of the cricket governing body were called before the committee, which convened yesterday. COPE is investigating allegations levelled against SLC officials of transferring money to foreign accounts, maintaining 15 cricket aid accounts and irregularities in the contract of former head coach Chandika Hathrusingha. Sri Lanka Cricket has established an organisation by the name Cricket Aid Fund. Its articles mentioned that members had been given a lifetime membership. The organisation was registered with former members of the cricket board, Tilanga Sumati Pala, Jayanta Dharmadasa, K. Madivanan and Mohan De Silva as lifetime members. Sri Lanka Cricket does not have any lifetime members. It was under cricket age. It was under cricket age. My committee was suspended in 2005. Then what happened was there was so much of money in the in the account. That money was used for some other purposes. You, you had money during tsunami, you collected so much money and it yes. disappeared after that? After that, yes. So how did it disappear? Disappeared in the sense, not, not, it was not used for that specific purpose. Yes, that actually, that was... Uh, that is correct. So you are saying, you are defending the institution and you are saying corrupt. You are saying audit, you are saying corrupt. No, no, no. You are saying corrupt. 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 आर्टिकल अभी उतनी नंबर आंगम ही ना तब मैं कहती हूँ काउ वक्त की बार करने ने इतना मापी ये पात कर लेती है ना निर्दारिया काउ दिया उपाली से समर्थ निर्दारिया वक्त की बार इतना रखने में टाइप कर हम इतना बुद्ध माल के टाइप कर बगैर वक्त की बार करने नहीं किया मामा होता है विश्वास करना हिता म Obatumala, Raja Vigana Kadi Pativaria, Vigana Nekarna, Venuata, Obatumala, Kamati Vidia, Vigana Hadagani, Miyashata with Maiti. Then Obatumala, but again, Vakuka Rogi, Dadar, Pinisamona, the Kalatin, Kocher Vida and Kalatino. Eterma Savapetuma, a pay Mularmone, Katamai Vakuka do patients letter Siskarande. Balapurtu, Mudala, Labun, Natinisa, Abdeka Kargana Berugia, Emirisavana, Namut. We can have the Batuma Shampoo Bale Demu, Shampoo, we can have a color, Master the Akaduda, we can have the Batuma, Palmetro, Artava Clava Denturu, Tricket Eight Ayat Negatu, Tava Kaliguba, Atiduana Master the Higa. Now, the 12 fundamental rights petitions filed against Inspector General of Police Buji Jayasundra and former Defence Secretary Hemasir Fernando were taken up again before a seven member judge bench of the Supreme Court, chaired by Chief Justice Janta Jasuri today. Now, during the proceedings, President's Counsel Shamil Pereira told court on behalf of His uh, Eminence Malcolm Cardinal Ranjit, had the intelligence information received on the terror attacks that took place on the 21st of April was given to the churches on time, the Easter Sunday masses scheduled for the day could have been cancelled. The council added that the carnage could have been prevented had necessary measures were taken. He noted that the cardinal is presenting submissions to the court in this regard to seek justice for the victims of the carnage on Easter Sunday, which killed more than 250 people while injuring over 500 persons. The 12 fundamental rights petitions are filed against the former chief, uh, uh, former defense secretary and IGP for allegedly failing to prevent the Easter Sunday terror attacks and thereby violating fundamental human rights. The BASL, which is one of the 12 parties, told the Supreme Court yesterday that 97 intelligence reports on National Tawhid Jamaat leader Zaran Hashim had been submitted to the Inspector General of Police and the former Defence Secretary from 2016 to the 21st of April this year. Now, the downturn in tourism following the Easter Sunday attacks has been a major setback to the country. With revival of the sector being a top priority for the government over the past few months, the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority and Sri Lanka Tourism Promotion Bureau introduced attractive discounts and concessions for tourists, drawing widespread criticism from many parties. 
Chairman of the Sri Lanka Tourism Development Authority, Johan Jaratna, assures operators that these measures seem to have had a positive effect after all. In May, we had 452 Italians arriving. In June, it was 675. That's a, a comparison between May and June would be a 49.3% increase. In July, that number went up to 1,431, which is a jump of 112%. Then in August is when most of these discounts actually took effect. And that number went up to 3,340, as opposed to July of 1,431, as mentioned earlier, which is a jump of 133.4%. The discounts that have been offered to the tourists has actually taken effect. However, we can't pinpoint which particular discount has mattered most, whether it was aviation discounts, whether it was uh, any other discounts that free were offered visa. by the government, the free, free visa, the embarkation fee. So if you were to look at the uh, visa, f uh, the visa fee exemption countries, the highest increases have been recorded by India, Japan, Romania, the United States, Malaysia, Singapore, South Korea and Latvia. Forecast wise, we are still looking at about a 2 million to 2.1 million total tourist arrivals for 2019 and we are confident that we will be reaching that number. With the effects of Easter tax still lingering, Sri Lanka is set to face further economic woes with the fiscal deficit expected to hit 5.4 percent, a 100 basis point overshoot this year. With investor confidence severely dented, a result of the combination of revenue drops and tight monetary and fiscal policies, growth is expected to remain sluggish, reportedly at lowest levels in nearly two decades. The matter is highlighted by senior finance minister officials under the condition of anonymity to Reuters. The fiscal deficit is significantly short of the 4.4% target set by the government, a condition tied to an international monetary fund loan further straining the deal that saw an extension of 1.5 billion US dollars for one year. The official added that fresh discussions may be required with the IMF as Sri Lanka has clear reasons for missing its targets. It was revealed that the required 20% spending cuts have been further constrained by government opposition due to upcoming presidential elections later this year. Even with the central bank easing its monetary policy by 100 basis points in the four months through to August, private sector growth is yet to pick up accordingly. And now to give you a market update, the All Share Price Index ended 0.37% week at 5,861.54 today. The market turnover was 720.9 million rupees, more than this year's daily average of about 651.7 million rupees so far. Foreign investors sold a net 95.3 million rupees worth of shares, extending the year-to-date net foreign outflow to 1.6 billion rupees worth of equities. We now have a brief report on how the markets performed during the day. The secondary market yield curve shifted upward across the board with the selling interest streaming from both local and foreign counterparties. At the primary bill auction held today, the one-year accepted weighted average of 8.33 up by 11 bips week on week, while the both three-month and six-month bill were rejected. The stock market, the, the market witnessed the steady downward throughout the day, trading recording an intraday low of 5.854, which is the one and a half month low, and prior to closing at 5.862, losing 22 points. A net foreign outflow were witnessed for a fourth consecutive. And now to take a look at currency, Sri Lankan rupee ended 0.2% weak at 180 rupees and 45 to 75 cents against the US dollar, its lowest since the 29th of January this year. It closed at 180 rupees and 10 to 30 cents against the US dollar yesterday. Let's take a look at how the Sri Lankan rupee traded against other currencies around the world. We take a look at what's happening around the world on the other side of this break. Stay tuned. Welcome back. You're watching First at Nine. Now let's take a look at what's happening around the world. 
Hong Kong leader Carrie Lam is set to announce the formal withdrawal of an extradition bill today that triggered months of unrest and has thrown the Chinese-controlled city into its worst crisis in decades. Protests against the bill, which would have allowed extraditions of suspects to mainland China, began in March but snowballed in June and have since evolved into a push for greater democracy. Pro-Beijing legislator Michael Tian, a member of Hong Kong's legislature and deputy to China's national parliament, said the government should withdraw the bill and that he would support an inquiry commission. He, however, worries that the decision has come too late and too little, as it's not only about the controversial bill anymore. The withdrawal of the draft legislation was one of the protesters' key demands. The other demands are the retraction of the word of riot to describe rallies, the release of all arrested demonstrators, an independent inquiry into the police perceived brutality and the right for Hong Kong people to democratically choose their own leaders. Prominent British lawmakers, including a number of foreign cabinet ministers, were among 21 conservative rebels who helped defeat Prime Minister Boris Johnson in Parliament yesterday. The MPs voted for an opposition-led motion that sought to prevent Johnson taking Britain out of the EU without a divorce agreement, prompting the Prime Minister to announce that he would immediately push for a snap election. The government was defeated by 328 to 301 votes on a motion put forward by opposition parties and some of the rebel conservatives who had been warned they would be kicked out of the party if they defied the government. Assembly the 21 conservative rebels facing party expulsion includes Nicholas Soames, the grandson of Britain's World War II leader Winston Churchill and two former finance ministers, Philip Hammond and Ken Clark. Strategy of the Prime Minister, and I have to say to him respectfully, when we hear use of the word collaborators, when we hear the use of the word surrender, yeah, the Prime Minister really should have some dignity and show some respect yeah. to the office. Cross the floor. Prime Minister, you have lost your majority. Yeah. 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 Jay Swinson. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, YouTube has been slapped with a massive 170 million US dollar fine by US Federal Trade Commission for collecting data on children under the age of 13 without parental consent. Parent company Google agreed to pay the sum as a settlement for violating privacy using data to target ads for children, contravening the Children's Online Privacy Protection Act. The company is also accused of misrepresenting its activities to business clients and refusing to acknowledge its activities. Now, Sri Lanka's oldest schools athletics championship will kick off at the Sukhothadasa Stadium from September 10th to the 12th. Playing host to over 17,000 school athletes from around the country, the meet has in the past produced numerous national athletes and champions. This year's competition will feature both junior and senior meets and will be hotly considered or contested rather for its prestigious accolades. And that's it from all of us here at First at Nine. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.